These will be titled Housing Development in Rural Communities, Rural Wellbeing and Health, Encouraging Rural Immigration and Building Welcoming Communities, and Digital Divide. So um, you can register for all of these on the Global Studio website, which I will put in the chat. And, um, and then I will pass this over to Veronica, who will um, talk about a mentoring mixer that we have coming up in October. And I also um, wanted to mention that uh, Dr. Sechaba Mape, who many of you will have heard, um, who's joined us on several occasions in the Global Studio, and myself and my colleague, um, Mr. Tabang Nkwanyana, we will be presenting um, a paper at the Social Justice Conference at Stellenbosch University on the 11th of, of September, and that will be, can be um, viewed on, online. It's a blended format, and it will be around the, the, around the role of land in architecture, and the theme of the Social Justice Conference is restitution. Um, Veronica, do you want to say a few words about, um, about the upcoming mentoring mixer? Sure. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you for that really meaningful opening. Uh, and thank you, Enrique, for giving me a couple minutes to um, just announce two initiatives that we have going on at the Center for Architecture. The first, um, as Kristen mentioned, is through the Global Studio. Uh, we're going to be hosting a virtual mentoring network event uh, in mid-October. And, you know, mentoring in the design profession is really important, um, connecting with people, um, is really important as a continuing education, also guidance in, in the design profession um, and education of, uh, of architecture, urban planning. And so uh, mid-October, we're gonna be bringing together professionals from around the world, uh, innovators, educators, um, and giving the uh, people the opportunity to connect with them and make some meaningful relationships through a virtual uh, mentoring uh, mixer. So please stay tuned for uh, postings on that. It'll happen mid-October over and we'll make announcements very shortly on the Globe Studio uh, website, as well as the REI Center for Architecture um, Instagram account, which I'll put links to uh, just after, uh, just in a bit. The second um, initiative is a survey that we're creating in terms of understanding equity, diversity, and inclusivity in design education further. We've come to realize that in Canada um, and around the world, we don't have enough information to understand uh, this critical aspect in design education. So we have a survey open for students and new graduates, recent graduates uh, of architecture, uh, both in Canada and around the world to take a survey and give us some critical information um, so we can understand uh, equity, diversity, and inclusivity, and that will help us uh, strategize educational opportunities and further uh, initiatives to diversify um, architecture and create more equity and allyship in, in the profession. So I'll put up a link to the survey uh, in the chat box shortly. If you could please, um, if you are a student or recent graduate, please take a moment to do the survey or uh, also please share it with your networks if you have uh, students or recent grads in your offices um, or if you know Benwin, please share. Again, it's Canadian and global uh, information collecting. Thank you so much. Thanks, Veronica. Um, earlier this year, we heard from various perspectives in the Global Studio series on the future of architecture. Today's lecture picks up on a topic that raised a lot of discussion and interest, disrupting the status quo of architecture. Uh, um, architect Enrique Mora uh, will share his projects using bamboo as a primary construction material. Enrique is a designer and educator from Guayaquil, Ecuador. He will then be joined by Reza Nick to discuss alternative and collaborative ways of practice based, um, based in Toronto, but with previous work in Argentina. Reza is also a practicing architect and educator. In an effort to address social equity and decolonizing our ways of thinking and working, I choose not to introduce speakers in the Global Studio with the markers of awards and positions. 
as these continue to be biased by race, gender, and ethnicity. Instead, I leave the speakers to introduce themselves with what they believe reflects their place in our profession of architecture and as human beings walking in today's troubled world. Both of these two architects are, um, are working on extremely interesting projects, so I encourage you to, to look them up online. Um, Enrique and I first met close to 10 years ago on an Architects Without Borders project in Quito, Ecuador. So I've been really looking forward to hearing about his latest innovative and thoughtful work. So Enrique, with that, I will pass it over to you. And thank you again so much for joining us. And thank you everyone who is, um, who is here to, to participate today. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. And I think I'm sharing my my presentation as well. Well, yes, thank you. Great. Okay. Hi, everyone. Everyone, uh, thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Douglas, for inviting me to this lecture, and thank you, Ressa, for sharing uh, this space with me. And for sure, we will have a, a nice talk later in my presentation. Um, well, um, the 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 topic that. I, the, when when I when I, I first of all I I apologize for my English it's not my native my native language so as you understand there's there's some words probably I don't know and here is Reza to to rescue me um, well when I was talking with Kristen uh, we we have been talking since few months ago in order to 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 see how we can involve together in, in the Global Studio, which is a nice opportunity for me to present the work that I've been doing here in Ecuador. Um, and, and we were interested in, in introduce the, the topic of bamboo, the use of bamboo as a resource of value for architecture in Ecuador. Uh, but uh, last week, I changed the presentation and and I thought that probably it would be better if I talk the, the territory as a resource of value for architecture in Ecuador. I think I, it's more interesting for me to give a, 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 a big perspective of the world that, I, that, that, we are, that we are doing here in Ecuador, not only me, some colleagues and the institute where I work in the university. Um, well, first of all, I would like to say that I live in Guayaquil, which is uh, is the biggest city in in, in Ecuador. Uh, Ecuador is in the equatorial line, as you probably know, um, and the capital of Ecuador is Quito. Guayaquil is the com the, ca the commercial the commercial capital from of Ecuador. Um, it's a big city. And as a big city, it has some, it has a lot of problems as well. In a century, the city has passed from 100,000 people to 3,100,000 inhabitants. Uh, you can see in this curve, the, in the 60s, we have a, a big uh, amount of people coming, to, coming from the rural areas to the, to the urban areas. And this, this process, uh, this process was, was given because the, uh, we had, uh, we have, uh, 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 we, we were export, we were petroleum oil exporters and it was a crash at that time in the petroleum area and a lot of people came to the city. Uh, and this, this process, had a lot of problems with 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 this. Um, Guayaquil is what has one of the highest rates of housing deficit in the countries in the country expressed in qualitative and quantitative ways. Uh, the sixty eight percentage of the territory is made of in, informal settlements, and only the the thirty two is a formal city, which is. Uh, 
which, which has become in, well, killed in a very inequitable uh, city. It's, uh, you can see different worlds here. There are a lot of um, difference between some, some zones. Um, also, another data I think it's important, it's around uh, 250,000 houses need to be built in Guayaquil, in, this, in, in Guayas, in the state of where, where Guayaquil belongs. And most of them, uh, they, have, uh, they have to, they are required in Guayaquil. Right now, the current situation of the city is like this, more or less this one. Uh, the 70, 75% of the housing has a qualitative deficit, and we have a quantitative deficit around 212, uh, for 24% of the, of, the, of the amount of, of housing. And these qualitative house, housing problems, uh, more or less, the, the, the main problem is the, the poor quality of materials that, pe that people use in the house in the construction house. Here you can see some pictures of these, of the, of some houses and the settlements that, that you can find here. Uh, during this time, you can see less of this, I have to say, but still you can find a lot of these problems. And uh, for sure you will know, uh, the what cause the what are the causes of these precarious settlements? Well, it's the fast pace of growth and without planning. Guayaquil is uh, 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 an example of this. We, as I said, uh, in the sixties, we had a, a huge amount of people coming to from the rural to the from the rural areas to the big city, and we didn't have a we didn't have, and still we don't have a, a, a an urban plan. Uh, the the municipality the, the city of the municipality hill here uh, they they are not clear uh, about uh, what has to be the future of Guayaquil and they have an idea of progress that uh, you will see in some picture coming 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 soon uh, that it, it's not solving the problem the housing problem and all these things that I am talking now. Well, also another cost is a high demand of, uh, for housing, uh, which is solved by illegal people, by illegal uh, constructors, illegal builders, or illegal promoters, uh, which sell, which we who who are selling, who were selling land uh, out of the borders of the city without infrastructure, and for sure these. This, the, the, it's a big problem, right? Uh, another cause is in the informal occupation of the land. Um, Guayaquil is a city who had a lot of mangrove, air, mangrove areas, and this informal occupation has devastated, has devastated these mangroves. Um, the lack of ser basic services, the use of poor quality and honorable materials, uh, the political clientelism, and as said, and as I said, an aggravated circumstance in the case of Waikil is the occupation of lack of string spaces, mangrove areas, producing a negative impact to, to the environment. So, with this kind, with with this uh, kind of urbanization that we have here in Waikil, uh, we have a low quality of life, unhealthness, diseases. Uh, there is a there is a big amount of people who had who has problem uh, skin problems uh, stomach problems um, the, you can find settlements next to garbage dumps social exclusion insecurity and violence vulnerability uh, to the different types of disaster uh, of disaster floods uh, I think Waikili is in the uh, we are in the high risk a zone of flooding in the world. Here you can see uh, an, an, aerial, an aerial view from an, from an informal settlement in 1970. 
uh, right now you you don't you won't see this uh, i have to say but i think this is a a, a nice picture a, a, a nice picture um, uh, um, in order to understand how was the informal informal settlement processes here in in Guayaquil. Uh, all this um, water area, it, it was a mangrove area. And in the 70s, in this, in this informal settlement, which is called the Suburbio, uh, these people uh, took off, removed the, removed the mangrove, and they used the, the mangrove, the mangrove uh, wood in order to build the, the steel of the houses. The, the foundation the foundation of the houses and uh, for for the house as well uh, 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 for the house they use uh, bamboo which is a uh, very common material in in these areas right now you can see this is the this is the same informal settlement uh, from the last picture and as you can see it, it, it's all filled uh, the municipality the what they did, they accepted the, the, this, this process and this informality. And what they have done is to, to fill the areas and leave the people there. And in order, and in, during the time they, they, are, they, they have given to these people uh, the infrastructure, the streets, and, but still you can see here, that there, there is a lack of green areas, there is a lack of public space because it, it wasn't a, a planned city. And here you can see in closer, in some closer uh, images, how is the life in, in some of them, of these um, settlements. Uh, you can see the, the, how, the peop how people use the, the the sidewalks uh, to, to cover the public space areas, how people use the streets uh, to, because they don't, have the, they don't have parks, they don't have uh, fields uh, to, to play. And also the quality of the house is very poor from outside, but inside the same thing, right? The, 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 the quality of the, of the materials, it doesn't it doesn't uh, allow to the people to improve their quality of life. Uh, but in the other hand, we have this other city, the, which is the the idea of the of the municipality of of, uh, of progress. Uh, you could see this is the center the, in the in the downtown of Guayaquil, uh, and where you can see. Uh, high rises buildings, uh, a lot of uh, hotels, uh, people using the, 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 the river. And also tomorrow we will have a, a lecture from M MVRD, M MVRDV, uh, this Dutch uh, architecture uh, practice. Uh, who is going to build uh, uh, one of their buildings here in this area as well. Well, uh, this, this, this first part of the lecture, it was to give you some context of the city where I come from uh, and, and, and to, to, to finalize this, uh, th there are some images that can show how uh, this context is. It's a very chaotic city. It's a city where, where the municipality don't, don't respect the green areas. Uh, it's a city where the, where the state and the, gov the, the local government are building houses uh, in the outside of the, of the borders of the city uh, to, give, to bring the people Give, bringing the people to the outside of the city and with all the problems that, that this will have. And after this, in 2012, uh, me and some colleagues uh, from the university, I work in a university here, which is called Universidad Católica Santiago, Santiago Guayaquil. It's one of the uh, uh, biggest universities in the city. Um, 
we, with some friends of, from university uh, uh, and colleagues, we decided to create a collective, uh, uh, a collective for, of architecture who is called uh, El Selectivo, who uh, the Selectivo becomes the space to rethink this, this city that we were looking for, that, that we were looking uh, and rethink the city responsibly with the times in which we live. And this idea, uh, well, all of, all of us, we, all, all of us live in, 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 in another cities. We, we studied outside uh, abroad. And when we, come, when we came back to Ecuador and to the city, we found uh, that nothing has changed during the long of time. And we need to, to, uh, to say something. The idea of the Selectivo was to generate urban and architectural thought, promote the development of urban architectural and artistic projects, and contribute to, uh, to the academy. Uh, as I said, all of us, we were working at that time at school. And for what purpose? Positioning the urban architectural culture in the city and, and in the city mind of the people from, from, from here. Uh, one, this is the, in this, in this graphic, you can see uh, which were the, the agents, as we call, uh, who, we, who, who we work with us. Uh, we were part of the academy, we worked with the community and with agents from the city, the municipality, uh, promoters and other thinking uh, and, and other people who is interested in the in this progress in this project. Um, as collective, we thought that it was important to to work in different scales in order to have a a, a real impact on the city. And uh, we moved in three scales: in street, in neighborhood, and it, it was more difficult, but in the city as well, right? Um, and I will show some projects that I have here from this uh, from ten more more than ten years ago uh, that we that we work on. Um, from the street, uh, we uh, the, here you can see we had a different moments to. Uh, we worked as a group and with the, with our students in the university in some uh, parking air in, in some in the parking day in the in, as you probably know in the parking day we we thought that it was important to give to the people some spaces for culture for thinking about the city uh, all of all our students had something to say out of the school uh, and they decided in, in, in our studios in the school, we, we work with them in order to make some installations to, to, to occupy the, 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 the street and the parking lines in, in the city. Uh, here you can see some different activities that our students had. And this, we were working uh, uh, as teachers, but also uh, as members of the Colectivo, El Selectivo. Uh, it was a nice uh, experience for students because they also had the to they, they also had to solve uh, architectural issues, uh, structural issues, and then these these. A opportunity to talk with with the community and how they they say to the people that the city was important and the all these open spaces and the all these moments of culture were important as well. Uh, at the end of the of the, all these of all these interventions, we had a. a concerts uh, in the in the outside and you can see here this is one of the teachers and 
and, and guy from the Colectivo. Uh, here, uh, there are some data I thought it was important to show. Uh, we presented an, in this parking day 20 proposals, 20 proposals, more or less 100 students were involved on these, on these interventions. Uh, 600 percent, 600 people uh, passing through these uh, through these uh, zones, through this street, were participating. We also engaged to the with commercial with the with the locals and with the uh, stores close close to these to this main street in order to participate with us. Uh, and, yeah, it was, I think, I think it was an interesting experience. And in the neighbors, neighborhood scale, uh, uh, we had, as Colectivo, we had a house that we were renting in one of the, in the heart of Guayaquil, actually, is one, is a, it was the, it, it, in, in a place called Urdesa, and it was the first, formal neighborhood design. Uh, this was our house. We rented this space uh, and we, we shared this space as Colectivo. Uh, 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 we had our, uh, our own offices here, but also uh, in this space, we, sh we were sharing with a uh, young artist from the city uh, who shared this space with us. Also, it was uh, here we had a, a publisher, a book pu publisher. Uh, she was she was also working with us. It was a, a nice nice place because the, a lot of things were happening there, and we we I mean it, it was a, a, a full of energy place, and in the heart of the city. Uh, as uh, here you can see, we had a different. For, we, we, we did some interventions inside the house in order to, to create spaces for the, for the neighbor, uh, in order to create some cultural, some cultural and artistic expressions. Uh, we, we, gave, we gave in this place uh, courses, of, uh, courses that we couldn't give in our school as teachers. We, have it, we had it here. We had here uh, spaces for our student for our students to present something that they don't feel comfortable to present in school. It was like a, a, a second school for us, uh, where we can say what I, whatever we want and without feel uncomfortable because of the of the school where we were working. We also had some cultural moments uh, as this one. We, we present theater, music, and, and then in, in, uh, in, in, the, in terms of to create a relationship with the people of the neighborhood, we did some, some, uh, some events. One of those were, we was called Con Pie Derecho, with right foot. Uh, and this, uh, the idea, the idea was to make some interventions uh, in Urdesa, specifically in one street, in the street next to next to our house, which is this one, which was an abandoned. Uh, it was a peaton, a, a, a pedestrian, a pedestrian street, but it was abandoned. Uh, uh, this area, Urdesa, um, it, during the past years has been changing the, the, the from, from housing to office, to an office area. And, and well, these pedestrian houses were, were at one, one second of time, it was very confluated by people. The kids were playing here, but right now, no one is, is, is walking around them. And, the insecurity is very high in this area. Uh, well, uh, as the same of the, with the parking day, we we called we work with our students 
we work with, with our students in, in order to make some interventions on street, uh, some graffitis, uh, give them to give them uh, giving them a, a place to express themselves with with art, with what 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 they think uh, they have to express. But also, uh, we we expected that people around the neighborhood could. Uh, paint here you can see we had different activities in order to to make the people around the the house to involve in this activity at the end of this activity as the previous one we had a a, a, a cinema uh, in the street and it, it was really nice because in in Waikil we are not used to this uh, activities on the street, and for some moment it felt it felt really uh, uh, it, it felt like that should be like this. People have had have, have to have to be in the street uh, uh, because our 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 city uh, allows this because of the climate, because of uh, South Americans, because we live in the street, and, and it, was, it felt like it should be like this. Uh, and then uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the city scale, we, had, uh, we moved from, from our neighborhood and we worked uh, in, a, in, a, in a project that we, we was called, it was called uh, Cine Itinerante, uh, which I think it's, it, can, it can move, it, it's not static. And we work in the, we, we are really, we as an art, we as architects here in Guayaquil, we are really concerned in how the people live and, and share and, and compromise with the story. We have, uh, we are close to the coast, to the Pacific, and there is a, a river and Suarez and Suarez who were uh, which cross pass through the through the through the city. And one place what, what I really like is this is this uh, yellow point called La Trinitaria, which is, which was an informal settlement in the 80s, but it's a really nice area because it it's surrounded by uh, by the estuaries and used to be a mangrove area. Unfortunately, there, there's no mangrove right now over there, but they, they still have the estuaries. And here you can see uh, people is living close to the, next to the, to the, to the water, uh, but they live in, in very poor conditions. And here also with our students, we did this Cine Itinerante, as a platform that could move through the water and giving to the people uh, a space inside the water that they can have another experience, different, a different experience from, from, the, from the riverside, right? Uh, here with our students also, we were thinking and construct and building different structures, temporary structures uh, made of cardboard, made of... Uh, of tela, of textiles and nets and whatever they want to, to experiment in, in construction. Um, we also had moments that where, where our students were, uh, were playing uh, traditional games with, with kids from, from, the, from this, this area. And we had moments like this, which I think they, it's, they are very important because uh, people live close to the water, but actually they, 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 they don't use the water. Um, so it was a, a nice moment uh, seeing uh, so these kids uh, floating in the, in the, in the, in the story and having another perspective to the, from the riverside. Uh, at the end of the activity, as the previous one, we had a cinema in the outside, uh, an outside cinema with kids and their parents, and it was an interesting place. 
finally, of this, um, with this El Selectivo interventions, we had another project which was called Cubo, Cube. Uh, and it was interesting because um, uh, we, all these previous interventions were made from school and were made from uh, we as architects, uh, a small group of architects. Uh, but after some years, municipality heard us and they gave us a space in the city hall uh, to make an intervention. And what we did, it was a, a, a cube, a, a, this structure where we can ask some questions to people uh, in order to have ideas of what people think about what means, uh, for example, what means uh, Guayaco, uh, people from Guayaquil is. Uh, if I can do something for, me, for my city, what would I do? Um, what, what would I share from my city? Uh, what are the problems of the city? From, uh, of the city? So uh, we, we build this, this cube uh, as, a, as a place where people can express ideas, express her, their, their feelings. And it was in the in the center in the downtown of the of the house of the of the city. It was on the, in the in the center of the city, and it, it had an, another impact uh, in, in the in 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 our lives. Uh, here you can see people writing thoughts, writing wishes, writing. Uh, reclaims uh, whatever they want. Uh, well, it was, uh, and at the end, we had all these collage with ideas uh, that, that we present to the municipality in, in another project. Well, uh, that was a phase of, of, of ten, 10 years ago that I was working on. Uh, and in, meanwhile, I was participating in this group of, of collect of this group of architects in 2013, 2000, 2014, uh, I had a, a, a small project, which I will present right now. Uh, it, it called Casa Convento. Uh, this project, uh, as you could see, uh, my, my thoughts are always, uh, my thoughts and interventions and practice in, uh, uh, in, at school or as part of this collective was really concerned on the territory, was really concerned of how, how in, in the participatory processes in, in involved with people, with community. Um, uh, it, it, those were my concerns. And when I have this project, uh, which is the house of my, uh, uh, the, the, the grandmother of my wife, uh, these concerns were around my head, for sure. And the, 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 the first thing that I thought, uh, well, the, the, the grandmother of my, of my wife lost her house and my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law asked me to, to, to do a house for, for her mother. And the first thing that I thought, because this previous work and the studies that I had in, in, in abroad, um, I thought that it was important to, to build with something with local resources, with local labor, and the, the, this, this, this was the opportunity to work with bamboo, to bamboo, uh, which was part of this territory because the, it, it, the, the, the house is in the, in, the, in the rural area of, of, the, of the coastal areas of Ecuador. Uh, first of all, I, start to, I started to, to study the topology of rural housing in the coastal area of Ecuador. And here you could see, you, you can see uh, how, are, how 
some characteristic of these houses. They are live from the lift from the from the from the from the floor. They use bamboo. Uh, they 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 have they have two areas: one service area, kitchen uh, and services, and one social um, area with the with the private area of the house. And they also have this space, this, this space in between, uh, which is the, like a porch. Uh, uh, after studying this, this typology, uh, I started to, to, to design the house. And I, I like to present this, this diagram because it shows how was the dynamics the, the dynamic to, to, for the design of this house. Uh, this is Ana Maria, my wife, her grandmother, my mother-in-law, me, and her, the, my wife's family, aunts, uh, un uncles, aunts, etc. And the thing that was that the, the, it wasn't too much money to, to build the house. Uh, I live in Guayaquil, which is seven or eight hours far from this, from this, from this uh, town. And the idea was to build with the family in order to decrease the, the cost of the house, right? Uh, here you can see I live here in Guayaquil and this is the, play, the, the site of the, the location of the house, Convento, which is around seven or eight hours. And it, it was a really difficult place to build because uh, during the winter, um, at that time, was pretty much uh, impossible to go, to go and go inside the the, the farm. Uh, here you can see some images of the context. Uh, you can see hills, uh, a lot of green areas, uh, and it's a rural area uh, where you find uh, extreme conditions of people living in small places, uh, poor quality, the same problems that I showed in the, in, in the city here uh, du duplicate because uh, they don't have access to anything. They don't have access to, uh, to clean water. They don't have access to infrastructure. They don't have uh, the, the closest uh, hospital is around two, uh, two or three hours from here. Um, they have public schools, but it, they are not good quality. Uh, but they have land, they have uh, food, uh, they have work, they work on the agricultural area. And they, I think they have a better life than me here in, in, in the city. Uh, this is the, the concept of the house. More or less, the idea of this house was to, to intervene, to, to work in, in a forest, in a bamboo forest, and to, to build a house. And after, the, after some years, uh, the house uh, will disappear and it will belong again to the, to the bamboo forest. For this house, uh, some intentions, we were like, we're uh, using local resources, as I said, I'm very, I'm very interested on that. Uh, build something in low, uh, very low cost construction and low cost maintenance. Uh, use local technologies. Uh, also, for me, it was important to use a, a construct a constructive system, very simple, um, that that people who is involved in this, who was involved in this project. Can learn and you can learn a new te and uh, this technology of construction in order to replicate it in, in another house. Um, it, it was quite ambitious this problem this project because I, I thought that uh, my, my idea was to impact in the in in uh, uh, an amount of people on the town, but uh, which was very difficult because uh, it's a private house. And we built with my family, my political family, uh, but uh, so it was difficult to 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 make another people 
be part of the of the process. But 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 at least I think the people around the uh, in the town recognize the house and recognize uh, the that architecture and the use of bamboo in another way that they used to use it. Uh, and they also they call the house la casa modelo, like the model house, because they feel something that, uh, that they can replicate in, in their house. Uh, the self-construction was uh, 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 something very necessary of this. Well, here you can see some ideas, the sketches, uh, the, the main idea of the house, following the typology, the typology of rural houses, houses in, in this area was uh, to create a, what here? to create a, a, a social and service area, split it uh, with a, 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 a room area, a, 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 a personal area, it split both of them big, big for, of, um, by this uh, outside, inside space, the terraza. Um, well, we had a, well, here, here you can see the section of the house. And the idea of the house was to, uh, because the grandmother was living alone, it was very important for me uh, to, it was very important for me to, to create a house that can close everything at one uh, at, uh, at a moment of the day because the, the the grandmother was alone or she had to go to the to the to the to the town and when she was there or when she when when the the family was there the house could open completely and to have this experience of outside outside and inside very uh, very strong in a strong way Well, uh, as a uh, constructive system, we I used a, a concrete foundation, wood structure frames, uh, some wood louvers, panels, bamboo structure for the main structure of the house, and the, uh, but also it was a it was a kind of laboratory of using the bamboo because I used the bamboo pole as a structure, but then. I use uh, bamboo in, in another different ways that I will show you soon. Uh, well, this is a site. Uh, here you can see the foundations and the, the place is, is amazing. You can find a huge forest, a bamboo forest as a as curtain of, from, for, the, for the house. Uh, because the, the, one of the problems that bamboo has is that people use it a lot in Ecuador but they don't, they don't immunize, immunize, immunize the, the bamboo. They don't uh, immunize the bamboo and the bamboo has, if you don't do that, the bamboo has probably five years uh, lifetime. It's, a, it's lifetime, it's five years, no more than that. Uh, so in order of that, we create, we immunize the, uh, the, the bamboo that we built. Uh, the bamboo was built by the family, was cleaned by the family. We did this uh, in the farm. And then um, we, we dry the bamboo. Uh, and for the construction of the main structure, the structure I, it, it was the only moment that I had to, to hire uh, experts on the on the on this right uh, so I hired two guys uh, who were working with the material uh, here you can see how they they are building a beam uh, well how these these were our low test because um, it was my first my first experience working with this material I really don't I really don't know anything about bamboo before this. Uh, the, well, the only thing that I know, that I knew, it was that in, in our school, uh, we had a teacher uh, who was called Jorge Moran, 
Ubidia, and he, he, it was the bamboo master. Uh, he had a lot of experience and and he also at school, in our school, he was uh, uh, giving us some advices, giving us some lectures in order to work with this material. So at this time, uh, this was the load test that I could do. Uh, I asked to these three workers, okay, stay there and let's see how the how they being flexed. Um, here also an, another problem, uh, it's not a problem, but another issue that I had to, that I had to work with and deal with, it was here, he, this guy is the uncle of my, of my wife, uh, Cesar, and he's deaf and he can't, he can't talk, but he, he, he's a, a wood worker. He work with, with, he has a small, a small furniture a house and he he built with, with wood. So he was very involved in the process, but as he knew how the material work, uh, we had a lot of conflict because he 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 wanted to 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 participate to be more active in the in in this in this process, uh, which was it, it was really interesting. But it, it was, I remember it was really difficult to, to work in, in this project. As I said, it's seven hours from here. Uh, they, they don't have internet. They, 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 they couldn't read plans, architectural plans. I never draw an architectural plan for this. Uh, I, I draw a basic plan because they, they didn't know how to read it. And all the, pro, all the project was built with uh, with sketches with with hand drawings uh, that I was drawing my in my papers taking pictures sending to 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 Cesar or or my wife's sister uh, she was in that area in that time over there and she was explaining to Cesar and other people who was involved in the construction how to build this uh, it was a uh, really difficult and really uh, um, a, a logistic thing to to work with. Uh, well, here you can see the the main structure uh, built. Um, uh, nudo, uh, like a, an intersection of bamboo. Uh, we use the we use. Uh, the bamboo, but an open bamboo in order to 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 use it like a roof. Uh, oh, above of this, we had a, sheet, a metal sheet, but uh, this using of the of the open bamboo uh, reduced cons uh, considerably uh, the the percent the, the the temperature inside the temperature inside the house. Uh, and also it helps to reduce the, the noise of, uh, due to the, to the rains and all these uh, things. Well, here you have the, 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 the structural lift and then all, all, all of this was practically uh, built with, with these bamboo constructors with the help of, of the aunt, uncle of my, of my wife. And then this is the final, the final result of the house. Here, you, as I said before, it was a kind of laboratory because I used the bamboo pole here, as you could see. Uh, uh, here I used the open bamboo on some on certain walls, but then the in some windows where I used something called latilla, which is the strips made of bamboo. And, and this gave this gave to the house a uh, different quality of space, uh, which what, what I was looking for, uh, because I was looking for, as I said before, a house that can feel that you can that it was very close, very secure, and very close at one time of the of the of the of the moment, but then you can feel. By the other hand, that a house that could open a lot, 
that could that uh, the the space cut pass through the through the whole house um, and giving you the, another experience. Another thing that I think it was important is that uh, it, it's a very small house in square meter. There, there are 125 square meters, but uh, for a rural house, I think it was important for 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 the family to have a house which is which doesn't seems small, which doesn't seems like a like a rural house. Uh, it's very high, and in some moments I was thinking that probably it's too high. But then when I see on these pictures, the previous one when when is in front of the bamboo, I, I, I think the scale, it, it's the appropriate. Uh, as you can see, the house is very well, well related with the, with the context. It opens to the, to the bamboo areas. And, and another thing that I was looking for, it was uh, in, the con in, the, in the other hand of, to having a very close hand house uh, that it, in cert certain moments of the day, it was very open and it was very transparent, like a light, uh, like a light box. Here you can see how the use different use of bamboo also allows me allowed me to to having different type of uh, of screens and different types of of shadows going inside and going outside the house. Uh, different configurations of windows that, that, that you can have on the house. Uh, this, the, the, this, the middle space that could open completely, uh, completely and, and these relationships that I was very interested on, uh, on the inside and outside, how, how it should be. So, uh, to, uh, so, which is the future for our region? All, all these projects and all this, uh, the, this moment that, I, the, that we were working as Colectivo and all this rethinking of the city and the, and the, and the bamboo house, the, the convento house, all these projects made me, uh, has made me think what is the future, which is the future for, for our region. And I think uh, due to, the, to our, to our location, the color is here. Uh, uh, we have the bamboo as uh, as a very important uh, plant here. Uh, we have a lot of uh, bamboo areas here, and also that because I'm I'm working at school in a labor in a housing laboratory, which is involved in solving and studying and researching uh, how should be the, 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 the social housing here in, in Guayaquil. Uh, I think, and we think at the university, as university, um, the bamboo is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is an option, it's a, it's a huge option. Uh, and here, I would like to present two projects that I wasn't involved that I, I was involved directly on these projects, uh, but I think they are very important because they, they uh, because right now they are becoming on part of the world that I will do in, in the future. Uh, this project, the first project is the Ecomateriales, which is a research project led by, led by, by Jorge Morán. Uh, and in this project, the, they, they were thinking uh, how to industrialize the bamboo, how to make, how to change the use of this pole of bamboo into something uh, industrialized, standard, standardized. And they did different type of panels made of uh, different types of uh, cutting the bamboo. Uh, here you uh, well, and they create these ecomateriales, which is uh, the, the concept of ecomateriales is uh, so there are some construction materials 
viable in two aspects, ecologically and economically. And if they, have, they should have these conditions. They are resources from a region or locality, rationally exploited and transformed, have quality and efficiency conditions with less impact of the environment. And also they can, and they can also be a result of recycling materials. Uh, so uh, on, with this research that Jorge Morán and, and their partners were doing, they, they create these ecomateriales. And here you can see the energy incorporated in the case of bamboo, it, it's, it, it's good because it's not a high technology, technology that we don't have here in, in Ecuador, uh, but also it's, it's not too expensive. It's in the middle, which is a nice opportunity, a good opportunity for us to work with a material which is not raw, but which is a bit industrialized and can solve the problems that you could you have seen till now. Uh, well, they create these panels, different type of panels, and there are two projects that were they, those panels were used to. Uh, in 2020, uh, Boris Forero and Robinson Vega, they are both a uh, teacher from the university. From the university, they created these panels and then Jorge Morán, Jorge and, and Robinson Vega created a bamboo documenta documentation center using those panels as well. And finally, a nice project that, uh, that, that uh, gave, gave us a, another direction of these ecomateriales uh, is the RAE, uh, the Ecuadorian uh, shelter in the Antarctic, a project led by Alejandro González, Ignacio de Teresa, Juan Carlos Bamba, Robinson Vega, and Donoso. They they were working on they were working on how another materials, uh, how um, this another how the resources from our territory. Uh, and how the wasted uh, could serve, could help to create uh, new materials. Uh, they were working with coconut. They, they found the 80% of the coconut or this uh, of corn or, or another material were, uh, were uh, considered waste. And they, they, they create they create in a research project a different type of, uh, of panels made of this waste, made of these weights, in order to create a final, uh, in, in order to create the, these panels using the bamboo as, uh, as, as enclosure with uh, these fibers inside in order to, to reduce the, the, the the, the weight of the bamboo in order to create an isolation and other things. And finally, the application of these, of these panels was in, in, in this shell, small shelter building in, in El Chimborazo, which is uh, around 4,200 meters uh, above the sea. And using these panels, and the, uh, but also uh, giving a, 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 and also this another shelter which was presented in the Antarctic and it was built in the Antarctic in the in the Ecuadorian shelter. Okay, thank you very much. Wow, thank you, Enrique. That was amazing. Um, really nice to see the range of work um, and I really appreciate you sort of walking us through your journey and like the context where you're based and how that has slowly um, but surely over the past 10 years, I'm sure like longer than 10 years, uh, but at least the, the 10 years that you covered that how that's influenced your work and how slowly it's uh, um, addressing that context and the, uh, the various issues that you're addressing directly, indirectly. Um, 
So thank you for that. That was, that was really inspiring. Um, and all, uh, I have a, you know, a lot of questions and we can have a conversation about all of them. And I, I would invite anyone, uh, I'll try to make some time for any questions from the, uh, from the listeners as well. So you can just type them in, uh, in the chat and then I'll try to uh, incorporate it in our conversation. Um, but maybe just to like start off as like a, um, this notion of which you brought up that you had uh, been working uh, while in the, uh, the, the collective, um, El Selectivo, um, and how you were trying to address these three different scales. Um, um, I'm sure there's, there's going to be, there's a lot of students in the, uh, that will be listening to this. So kind of like having a more of a um, high level conversation about that aspect of um, like the importance of being able to communicate and work in different scales as an architect, as a thinker. Um, how has that sort of impacted your practice? Because you've reigned, like you, as you said, you work in city scale, neighborhood scale, street scale, all the way down to you know, material scale and detail scale. And um, at least to me, that's what is really amazing to see as a as a as a thinker as a creative critical thinker but also uh someone who's making physical things into the world uh in the world uh, um yeah like how has that like was there maybe we can expand on that a bit um and how like was that a conscious choice in in the beginning of your career or was there something that naturally you began to sort of work into your uh, workflow and your your practice and where it's ended up now um, in terms of scale. I think that would be an interesting thing to know because of the range of work that you've done over the past 10 years, like, and um, where you stand now in terms of uh, using different scales and addressing different scales with your skills as an architect, as an educator. Uh, well, um, it, it, it come naturally because uh, here at school, uh, while, while I was studying, uh, we were not um, we were not um, affronting. We were not working on the construction in construction things. I, I think that's a huge problem that we have at schools that students, it's, all, it's always uh, digital or, or models like this, but it, was, it, it never is like, like okay, we, we're going to, uh, to do a, a real project. We, we're going to work with materials and with materiality and this thing. Uh, so I think the, the, in, the, in the Selectivo was a nice opportunity uh, for the students to, to engage with these problems, to with the material, and to 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 understand how the things, how to how what they should do in order to do the things to to get stand. Uh, I think it was very interested very interested for the, on that for students uh, and. Uh, from the materiality, but also the, the, the set, as you said, the, the different scales of in of work, you know, the, 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 the street, the, the the neighborhood, how they can uh, how they can give information, uh, have information from people, how they can talk with people and and relate with their problems. Uh, how the uh, how the city was sol is solving some issues that they are not solved. Uh, I, I think the, these scales allow to the students to 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 think on on, on different things that I think important. And and, and for me as an architect. Um, the same because the the, the, the the bamboo house, the convent house, uh, it was a, a, a real 
uh, it was really difficult because I never built with bamboo. I, I didn't know anything about bamboo. And with that project, I had to understand the material, how they behave, how, it ha how the joints has to be. Uh, I had the, this, this uh, Jorge Moran, uh, which it, it, was, uh, it was good for me that he was at that time building something bamboo close to the school. Uh, the, the bamboo documentary, uh, the bamboo center that I showed. Uh, so I could see that uh, and learn some things that I have to, uh, that I had to apply in the bamboo construction that I was doing. Um, and the, the thing of this case also it's very, actually right now I'm working at school with, with, uh, in this housing laboratory and we are con constantly, thinking on the scale of the house, moving through the scale of the house, how the house should be in Guayaquil, how the house should respond to the users, should, re should, change, should change in during the, during the time, which is very important here because the, uh, people, uh, people uh, they, they don't have the whole resources to build the complete house from the beginning. So it's important to, 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 to make that the house has to be progressive, has to be incremental. Uh, and we are, we are moving through the house to the group of the houses and how these houses, group of the house is, is in relation with the city. So yeah, the, the different scales, I think it's very important to, to understand the construction problems, urban problems, uh, uh, and the architects must move on these on these different scales. Yeah, I, I that really resonates with me because I, I I try to work in a similar fashion and I try to sort of speak about that to my students too. And I think, as you said kind of like piggybacking on what you just responded. Um, the one of the issues with, um, I guess, architectural education uh, in many instances is the lack of um, kind of push to understand one, the, the materiality and actually how things come together when it's in the built world, but also um, getting out into the street, which I think I, I always try to do. Um, and I always encourage my students as well. And I love seeing how with El Selectivo and now I think it's still happening with your teaching as that students are actually, you know, engaging with the public as, as actual human beings and the actual street as opposed to, you know, the idea of who the community is or, um, or what would be theoretically or speculatively good for the site. Um, what has, because I, I, I'm sure that has influenced even your um, ability to um, kind of take on things that maybe you're not an expert at or you don't know the answer to. Because um, when you're dealing with anything that there is a public or there's a community, at least from my experience, it's, it's like you learn things that you didn't think about or your assumptions are kind of twisted in some way. Um, how important has that been for your practice and like the ability to actually work with students and um, take the ideas that were that had a strong theoretical conceptual backbone of um, what you want to achieve, but then taking it to the street and or to the public, to real world, um, and kind of like learning from that. Uh, and how maybe the question I would like to ask you is like, how has it? Do you see any similarities where you were working in El Col uh, in uh, Selectivo, and um, as your practice now, like building the house and learning? things and adapting uh, constantly how has how how um, how much improvisation was necessary in each case and how important was it in each case mm. well um, 
Yeah, for sure, work, working with people, uh, you, you learn a lot from them. From them working with the community, you learn a lot from them. And because as you said, there are a lot of assumptions that we have, uh, uh, but then like, talking with people and, give, and being in the, in the street, uh, walking, talking, listening to, to, to the community, give you the, 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 the confidence that, that, that you were true or wrong. I mean, that's, that's important. Uh, and that influenced me a lot in, in different ways because, uh, well, I, I really love to talk with people in the street. I, I really love to talk uh, with people in the street, listening stories, watching people, what, how they move, what they are doing. And uh, I, 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 as I said, that influenced a lot of me, even in research projects. I, I was, uh, all the research that I do at school is qualitative, more, it's more qualitative and it's more engaged with the community, how they live, how they use the common spaces. And this is related also with the selectivo. In, the, in my own practice, probably is not well it depends the depends the projects i mean that depends the project because they are private projects but still the convento house it was a it was a, a, a private house it was a private private project by my aspiration as an architect was to engage the community to the house it was really difficult it was really difficult because it's in a private in a private plot i mean it wasn't easy but I think, as I said, in certain way, uh, I, I got it because people recognize the house. They, when, when, when people ask for the house, they, they, uh, they recognize the house as, the, as, a, as a model house, uh, as a model house, which is good because they, they learn that, that that should be the, the way how they use the bamboo and how a rural house should be. Uh, also, they recognize uh, we had a, a in 2016 we had a, a, an earthquake close to in, in Ecuador, close to that area, and the house was good. And also, they recognize the, the, the this kind of of building can can work with we in, in earthquakes. Uh, so, so so yeah, I, I don't know if yeah, and how much improvisation. A lot. <laughs> uh, I think architecture it, it's full of intuition and full of improvisation. Improvisation. Uh, I mean, it's completely different what we we think and what we can draw and how the reality is. And and all the projects that I have been involved with, uh, they are full of improvisation. I mean. Uh, in this, I remember in this parking, in this parking day events, uh, we didn't have electricity. We have to get some, we have to talk with the store and give them some money in order to give us electricity. We had a permission till that, to, till uh, an amount of uh, an amount at that time. And the police came and we have to talk with the police and people start to, to fight with the police in order to, allow us to to continue with the concert uh, in the in the in the house in the convento house the same i said i didn't i didn't have drawings i, I had to draw everything and and still uh, in my in my practice it is still like that because I, I, I what i most of the problems that i work on there are a lot of, there are from, from, far from Guayaquil, they are in, in five, six hours from Guayaquil. So I could go very few times. So I have, uh, and they have to be very easily to, to build. Uh, so as most of the times I solve the problems, the drawing, the sketching something. Uh, or doing one-to-one mock-up with the with the with the builder, 
in the in the construction site and changing things in uh, by through 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 pictures. So yeah, the improvisation I think it's a quality of architects, <laughs> it, mm. which is not good. <laughs> I think which is not good. <laughs> this gave this give us bad fame. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and you think improvisation gave bad fame? I mean, because people they 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 they, they feel like the architect, uh, it they, they feel that you they they will have always changes mm. of the projects. You know, it, like I don't know, <laughs> it's like. But I think improvisation yeah. is part of of the of the thing. I, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, because, well, I see it as like problem solving too, right? That it's, um, which is something that I, I keep connecting it back to the education because I think that's uh, important to sort of learn from what we can adjust in pedagogy that reflects practice more. And I feel like the, like the improvisation, the, the, the ability to improvise and problem solve when things that you plan did not go according to your plan and I feel that a lot of creatives not just architects designers like people that like plan things and it doesn't go their way that causes stress and anxiety and you know <laughs> just giving up so I think like actually like knowing that is like a big part of the practice is knowing that the the end result may not be a most likely will not go according to plan. So knowing where to problem solve, where to improvise. So yeah, that's where I I like to sort of like think that the the scales that you've worked at, like with students in public space, um, and then with the client work, which kind of like takes me to like a question that I have, which is I think I you know, I'm constantly asking myself and others that work in these two worlds of more public, uh, educational and client work. Um, how different is it for you to think, like produce things for clients um, and versus things that are with students or a bit more like with the city, something that is a bit more open-ended, like, um, what have you, maybe are there things that you like about either or you don't like about either or ways that you've had to uh, adjust to make either work for you, uh, whether it's working for clients or working for um, more open-endedly, whether it's for the uh, uh, institution or the public, public sector. Um. The the work in the in the school it's always more free. You you have more freedom. I mean, it, it, we 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 at school take the our, our design studios as uh, laboratories of experimentation. Uh, I think all all we are involved in in, in the academic we we use the the. the the, the our students for that uh, uh, for experimentation what we are thinking on or what the problems that we see on the in our cities so it's we, we have more freedom on the on on our students in fortunately i had some freedom in my private uh, projects as well uh, I mean, in, in certain way, right? Because at the end, the the the, the budget, the budget and the the regulate. I, I have some. I have a lot of freedom because most of the things I built, uh, they are built in 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 areas that they don't have regulations. So I can do whatever I want. I can use the material what I, the material that I want. Uh, so that, uh, which is good, but also make me has made me be very uh, compromised with the local issues, uh, because I mean, uh, 
I understand that the, the, the architecture and the things that I'm doing, they, they have very, they have to be very in context. They have to learn a lot of from a lot of, of the local, uh, of the of the of the local territory. Uh, they have to work with la local labor. They have to work with with local resources uh, in order to be more effective, in order to be more sustainable, in order to be more I mean, more more conscious. So yeah, that freedom uh, has allowed me to 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 involve in these topics that I that I concern. Amazing, best of both worlds. <laughs> That's great. Um, I'm I'm trying to be conscious of time. I know we're a bit over, so I I would love to. I have a lot of more questions and things. I think would love to speak to you more about because um, I feel there's certain things that were on the similar wavelength of what we've been trying to do in this practice of architecture <laughs> to try to sort of, as Kristen put it, uh, rethinking how uh, it's done, whether it's through using um, the institutions and our privilege of being educators with students. Uh, but yeah, I would love to continue, but maybe we can take one question from uh, an audience member if anyone has any questions. Um, we can type it. I'll wait 30 seconds. Um, but if not, um, maybe while if anyone's thinking of a question, the uh, Dion had a kind of, a, I guess, a um to kind of like scale in on the material and we can kind of like end the conversation there about the the structural properties of bamboo and um what the potentials are to actually um he had mentioned here that um they're like higher buildings have been uh built with with uh, bamboo, like, is that something that you are interested in exploring? And based on what you um, built with uh, uh, Casa Convento, like, is that something that you would like to pursue and use the material more and more? Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, that's why the, I, I, I had to, to, to try to, to come with the, the final question, which is the future for our region. I, I, um, I think the bamboo, as far as we use, uh, it's a material that here in Ecuador is not well recognized. Uh, it's not, I mean, when the, the Convento House uh, earned, got, uh, earned the, the national prize of architecture here in Ecuador, and then it earned uh, a, a, an Ibero-American prize also. It's, uh, which was amazing because I mean it's a small house, it's a bamboo house, and no one thought that a project like that could be recognized with the highest price of, of architecture here in Ecuador uh, and then in you know in even America. Uh, but I, I think that opens to to think that that should be a, a, a material for the future. Uh, and and for sure it's not the way I, I use in the convento house. I mean the convento house is the more uh, traditional way to use it uh, because of the because of the money because of the because of the budget because of who who built it. Uh, those were the the, the 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 things that that took me to 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 work with the bamboo in that in that way. But as as, as academic uh, and the project that the projects that I showed at the end, uh, I, I, we thought that uh, that the, the the future should be uh, the industrialization of bamboo. I mean, to I was work I was talking here with the, the, I think they're here Veronica and Trevor, uh, and they, they showed me their work on contralaminated wood. And the same thing, I think it should be the future here, the bamboo, the contaminated bamboo. And we don't have that 
and that allow that for sure allow allow us to be part of the solution of the housing that I was uh, talking at the beginning of the of the house of, of the presentation, which is the biggest problem here in Ecuador in Ecuador and in the city. The the quality of the house, the 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 the, the quantitative problem, and for sure this kind of solutions uh, with bamboo because they are, they are they are very strong for structure they have a lot of uh, they have low incorporated energy in 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 the in in his in his building uh, they absorb a lot of co2 uh, i mean that should be the future i mean that's more sustainable <laughs> that, that. Uh, so for sure, I think that's the the way we have we have to do it in the future. So we are on that. We are on that. We are we are working on that at school. So yeah, for sure in the future. I we'll, hope we'll, them. The, yeah, I hope the the government or the or the, or the municipality really uh, really take that uh, that solution in their project because till now it's. I mean, it's amazing what they are doing as as social housing uh, projects. It's amazing. It's mm -hmm. concrete, big stations of concrete, similar houses, and yeah, the bamboo must be the the, the answer. Amazing. So we'll see more, hopefully more bamboo builds from you. Um, speaking of Trevor, he just sent a message saying um that he's interested in the practice of combining the designer with the builder taking complete responsibility for the process more like the master builder from pre-industrialized working methods and also interested to see the use of bamboo in cold climates would it work at high elevations in the andes like three thousand to four thousand meters above sea level well, that project uh, that I showed uh, some colleagues made in the Chimborazo, which is uh, 4,200, I think it's Chimborazo. Uh, it was a prototype and a, an experimental thing. Uh, I, I, I really don't know if they, I, I'm sure they, they, they got some, info, some, from, some data. Uh, for, for sure, they, that was the idea of, the, of that project. But I, I'm not too involved on that. Uh, but they they also put some a lot of insulation uh, between of bamboo and a problem that they have and also they have it in the Antarctic in the Antarctic because they took uh, another prototype to the Antarctic is that the bamboo is not well I mean it's not a friend of of humidity and those panels uh, a friend of mine he went few months ago and he told me that that those panels on the outside were, were too exposed and they are devastated right now at the end there was, but I mean it was a prototype so it was like that it was for that actually it was for to to see how the material behave in these in these extreme conditions how the material uh, behave in in, in 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 cold and and yeah and they also found because the, the bamboo is not, it, it doesn't say, uh, yeah, it's not too friend from, for, for the humidity. They found different types of, different types of fungus, actually. <laughs> it was amazing. So the, yeah, the chemistry was a, a nice project there because she found some new fungus on the bamboo. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, well, I think for the sake of time, again, I would continue this chat, maybe hopefully one day in person, either in Ecuador or if you make it up here to Canada <laughs> or yeah. somewhere else. Um, but yeah, it was a pleasure to sort of hear about your practice um, over the past decade. And um, I hope everyone that gets to watch this is inspired um, by it because I think 
like I'm definitely inspired by it. And it's always beautiful to see others in different parts of the world kind of, um, you know, carving your own path in different ways. And, you know, I'm sure you can attest that it's, it's not easy. There's challenges to it every day because uh, you are working at it yourself, but it was really wonderful to see um, the depth of the work from, from the, uh, the collective that you had to the teaching, to the personal project for, um, you know, family, mother-in-law's grandma. Oh, I mean, your wife's grandma, which is also another challenge. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, but it's beautiful. And I hope to, yeah, to be, continue to be connected and uh, to see more projects together. Um, uh, that you produce um, so and thank you Kristen for um, inviting me to sort of have this conversation and to meet Enrique so thank you thank you both thank you well thank you and thank you both I was um, I was also really interested uh, in, Enrique, your, in that uh, image you showed of the distribution of bamboo across the world because because uh, honestly I what I, I mean I, I know it's you know quite prevalent but I hadn't realized how, just how prevalent and so um, it, it would be interesting to think about in the future, you know, putting together uh, a discussion on, in, the, in the global studio about localized materials. I mean, we've seen through the COVID pandemic, you know, the incredible impact of supply chain breakdowns. And so, you know, it's a reminder to all of us the need to sort of relook at um what our local materials are and how to use them which i think you you know is you did so spectacularly beautifully with that house and um so something to think about i'm sure trevor and um, veronica would be interested in in that as well to sort of push the idea of local materials um, yeah. so and and as you say how to push them to the next sort of level in the future um, so something to look forward to. Um, so I'd like to thank you, Enrique and, and Reza, again, so much for, for the presentation. And, um, and thank you, everyone, for, for joining us and, and uh, being part of the Global Studio Lecture Series. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Reza, for, for the time. All thank right, you everyone. All. We'll We'll, we'll see you at the next lecture. Again, it's just globalstudio.ca um, and you can find all of our upcoming events. Bye. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Thank Thanks. You so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.